Looking back at exercise 1a, and using the drop-down filter on the date column, we can see all of the available dates that appeared in that file, which was all the months of 2017. In exercise 1b, I'm expecting to see all of the months of both 2017 and 2018. Let's see, by clicking on the final step of exercise 1b, whether all of that data now appears in this query. Click on the drop-down again, and we still only see the months of 2017, so that's weird. Press cancel. Okay, let's go back to the source step and see what's going on when we're querying file 1b, which we know includes 2018. At the moment, when we source that data, we're sourcing it horizontally with the each date in its own column. So if we scroll across here, in fact, even at this point, I've scrolled all the way across and I still can't see 2018, so it must be this first step which is causing a problem. Now at the top here, above the data view, what we have is the formula bar. If you can't see the formula bar, go to the view tab here at the top and just make sure that formula bar is checked. But what we can see here is a coded version of this source step pulling data from file 1b, the CSV file. And as well as that, we get some additional parameters which define what the delimiter is in the file, but also how many columns we wanted to pull from the file. So naturally, because we copied and uh, duplicated the previous query that had 19 columns, this one also has 19. But we want to keep this query flexible for any number of columns that might appear in the file. We can actually delete this section from the formula bar. So delete columns equals 19 and the comma that follows it. And then press enter. Unfortunately, that's not a change you can make using the settings area, but you can make that change in the formula bar. So now well, you can actually see here at the bottom, our scroll bar has become longer. And if we keep scrolling, now the data for 2018 appears. So that's a good little safety check when working with CSV files, is make sure you don't reference a specific number of columns in your query so that you keep your queries flexible to changes in the future. Now when we click at the end of the query, click on that drop down, we can see all of the dates in the file. What you've just learned is a tiny part of what Power Query is capable of. From merging similar files to automatically filtering and pivoting data, the possibilities are endless. Check out our Power Query Fundamentals course where we'll cover all the most valuable techniques and best practice to get you started.